All right, six feet going deep. It's Notorious with you. You, you rocking with the real Haitian, real Haitian, real Haitian. <laughs> aka DJ Jaquez. All right, DJ um, Jaquez. How, how do you say your name? Like, is it Jaquez or is it Jaquez? Because that's what I thought it was. Right. Jaquez. So, like, you could people say like Jaquez or Jaquez. You feel me? Yeah. But it originated from like my middle name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So my full like my whole name is pronounced in French. You feel me? Cause yeah. I'm from Haiti. Uh -huh. So it's pronounced Alexan, which is Alexandre yeah. in English. So D R E. Wait, is it spelled like A L E X S O N? A no, L A X A N D R E. Oh. Alexandre. But in French, it's just pronounced Alexan. Oh, okay. For me? Yeah. And then it's Jacques Andre Viana. But uh -huh. I have my boy, um, my boy Ryan. He can't pronounce it in French. Yeah. So he just took out the S and put a Z and he just says Jaquez. So. Isn't it like Jacques? Jacques? Yeah, Jacques, just like oh. that. But he can't say that. Ah. Uh, so. You speak Creole? Yeah. Full like, Creole. For? We me parle tout Creole. <laughs> All that good stuff. So you were born here in Miami or, you were born, or were you born in Haiti? No, I was born in Haiti. I came here when I was like, like four or five, mm -hmm. six years old around there. And then I did like kindergarten and then ever since then I did all my school year here. So like when you were in Haiti, like do you have any like memories of... Oh yeah, I went to school in Haiti till I was six. Mm -hmm. So like preschool there, kindergarten there. You feel me? And then yeah. when I came here, I had to redo it again. You hear me? Oh, okay. So yeah. you were like later? Yeah. The, like, were you like always the older, like the older kid? No, I was actually the youngest because they held me back. Oh, for real? Because of my birthday, bro. When, when's your birthday? Uh, September 13th, 1996. Oh, that's like next week. Yeah. That's, that's the day after the iPhone gets released. Yeah, cause I, I remember, cause like it's always the same day every year. Look, my cousin is calling me. Sure. He goes out here. Um, that's my cousin Talib. Like, oh, he, he oh he's your too. he's your cousin. Yeah. Oh, I think you guys were just friends. No, nah, cousins, bro. Oh, cause I was like, oh, damn, he's a uh, he's we, another Haitian. Yeah, we look alike, bro. A lot of people say like that's, that's we're, like bit. twins. You feel me? I feel like he's a little like lighter than you, like lighter skin. Yeah, he's 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 Haitian and Lebanese. You feel me? Oh, really? Yeah. That's like that's a weird mix. Yeah, it's nice though. You like full Haitian? I tend to say that, uh. but people like like to disagree. But my mom is Haitian and stuff like that. So I was born in Haiti, so I just say that. You feel me? Yeah. Um. So yeah, you were telling um you were talking about like going to school in Haiti and then coming here and like do redoing everything again. Right. So, like, all right. So my first language was French. Yeah. You feel me? Like that was like down packed. You feel me? Because that's what, that's what the upper class like the upper class in Haiti speak. Yeah, because everyone, know, they, they, also, oh, they went to school and stuff like that. They speak French. Right? No, they, they speak right. French, like the upper class. And then, like, the lower class, they speak, which is a slang, which is Creole. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they speak that, but luckily I speak more I speak more French, but I know, like, Creole as well, too. You yeah. Know? And then I came here, and then that's when I picked up, like, the English. And was then, it hard for you to learn English? Um, I think I was already speaking English in Haiti. Oh, really? Yeah, so when I came here... Like, it kind of just transferred over. Yeah. And, like, I was already speaking all three. Um, and then I picked up Spanish, too. So just you speak living four, in Miami, bro. So you speak four languages? Yeah. Oh, damn. Like, fluent Spanish or, like, mm, just, like... I mean, bro, I can go to Casa and order me some food, you know. I can... <laughs> churrasco. I can order anything, you feel me? Like, I can go to, like, Spain, Cuba, and I'll be straight. Uh -huh. you know? Like, I can move around. Because I know, like, over there, like, in, like, in Europe, they all speak, like, every... Like, like a bunch of different languages, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're like from France, they speak Spanish. If you're from Spain, they speak yeah, like, French out there too. Yeah, they be like they mix it up and stuff. Yeah. Um, they're asking for the the class number. Oh. Can I just send? Can you just send them to your location? Yeah, I did. I'm on the second floor, mm -hmm. first floor. Oh yeah. <clears throat> but um. So like, how was it like you know like being like growing up here in Miami? Um, was it hard for you, like being like a you know like a foreigner or you know in classes or like did you were you able to like fit in like like right away? In a sense, like really, like it was like not so hard as it was back then for mm -hmm. others, like maybe for my parents or for like the my older cousins. You get me? Yeah. Cause like that didn't really like matter as much in our generation of time. What do you mean? Like where we were from. You get me? No. So like. No, no, what do you mean? Like, back then, like, if you were Haitian, like, like, I don't know, they just didn't fuck with you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like, they were, like, mad disrespectful, like, oh, you're coming from a third world. You know, just how it is, like, with all the other third world countries, you know? Yeah. And, 
I don't know, like, when I was growing up, like, the people in my school, like, they didn't really care about where I was from. So, like, people wouldn't, like, be mad at me or, like, try me because I was from Haiti or anything like that. You get me? And plus, like, they, yeah. they didn't even, like, would never tell because of my skin color. Did like, I would. Hispanic? Yeah. Well, put, like, I, this is what I do. Like, coming up as a kid, like, I would go to people and be like, yo, I'll give you t- 10 tries. Mm-hmm. If you don't get the 10 tries, like, you, have, you owe me money. You feel me? Like five that's bucks. Your yeah, that was my little hustle. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. So like people go and they like, I'm like, alright, you got ten tries, and if you give me five bucks and if you get it back, you get your five bucks plus whatever more money you get me. Yeah. So they go, Puerto Rico, Cuba, they say Europe. Nope. This. Nope. This. Nope. Mm, nope. Everything was wrong, bro. Uh-huh. And then when I tell them Haiti, they're just like. Like, what, you're Haitian? They're, what like, the what the, they're like, nah, bro, I want my money back. You're lying, bro. Like, you're not really from Haiti. You feel me? How how would you, like, prove it to them? I would just, like, show them my passport. For real? Yeah. And they would just be like, oh, <laughs> okay. And then, like, or my green card or whatever and shit like that. No, but I'm, I'm still a U.S. resident. You feel me? My mom, she's a citizen and my dad's a citizen. But yeah, I don't, I don't want to be a citizen. <clears throat> Fuck that. You, you ever plan on moving, like, moving back out there? Definitely, bro. It's so beautiful out there. Like, people are asleep. Real How, asleep. When was the last time you went there? Mm, last summer. Last summer. Oh, you go, like, every summer? Or, like, every summer and Christmas. Oh. That's, like, when it's, like, super popular in Haiti. Like, That's when the, uh, you have all your family out there? Mm-hmm. Like, we live on a big mountain, and mm-hmm. it's, like, <clears throat> my cousin, my cousin, my grandma, my grandma's sister, like, my house, my mom's house. I know a lot of Haitians, like, they say, they, you know, my cousin, but it's, like, you know, their friend. You know, mm-hmm. Is it is it like that with your family, or is that, like, they were your um, real cousins? On the mountain, yes, but, like, like in Haiti, <laughs> like, it's a very small population, you feel me? Yeah. And, like, people do say that, but I feel like a lot of people do that, too, you feel me? Yeah. Not just Haitians. I feel like everyone in Miami, like, oh, yeah, that's, like, my cousin, you feel me? That's not really a cousin, but... How do you, uh, how do you feel, like, that, you know, like, what people think of Haiti mm-hmm. versus, like, what it really is? Like, how would you, like, you know... Like challenge, like how someone like views Haiti from that. That's never been. Well, shit. people people are asleep first off, and people like they usually go on this cruise mm-hmm. which goes to like La Badzi. It's in Haiti, mm-hmm. and I think it's all owned by like Royal Caribbean, and like I don't know. It just it's just like so like Americanized. It's not like the real. It's, Haiti. Like, it's not real Haiti. You feel me? Yeah. But like, if you really want to go to Haiti, you just go to Port-au-Prince or, you know, Jacques Mel or the beaches and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Or you can also go to, like, you don't, well, you don't want to go to the hood, you feel me? Uh-huh. But you can also pass by, you feel me? And, like, walk, see. like you see what's up, you feel me? Mm-hmm. But, like, in Haiti, like, there's not really much to do. You know what I mean? There's no, like, malls. There's no, like, movie theaters. There's no, like, stuff to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, what we do is, like, all of us, like the the whole gang and stuff, what we try and do is like find the most beautiful views mm-hmm. in Haiti. Like we go up like the mountains and all right, this is the view for today. You feel me? Yeah. And then tomorrow, yeah. like someone has to talk. Do you guys like take pictures of it? Or, like do you yeah, know, like, we take pictures or we just chill there. You know, um, whatever the case may be, we drink, smoke, you mm-hmm. me, just chill, talk, dance. You know, like stuff like that. Yeah. Make freestyles till the like sunset comes. And that's what we're trying to look for. But you can change the weather in Haiti, like, within, like, 30 minutes. What do you mean? Like, you can go from the beach house, where it's, like, super hot. Or not even the beach house. You can go to, like, the city. You get me? Yeah. And boom, it's like, like, lower, like, lower elevation. Mm-hmm. It's, like, hot as hell. Like, Miami hot. Yeah. And then you can go to, like, the mountain. all the way up in the mountain. And, bro, like, the clouds are, like, <laughs> in your face. And you're just, like... How do you get up there? Like, you just walk up there? or No, nah, like, you, you take, like, you? your pickup truck. Uh, yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. you guys just like ride in the back and you get to like, just go up. Mm-hmm. Like we get in the car and a bunch of us. Well, this is thing that they they call Tom Forty. Uh-huh. I, I don't know. Uh-huh. They taught me that when I was in Haiti like two years ago. <laughs> and what they do is like, all right. So when we're going up the mountain mm-hmm. in the car, we're going like sixty. Yeah. Just, mm-hmm. And then we gotta go down the hill, and these mm-hmm. niggas they get out of the whip, and they're just like on the side of the car like. Leg like whole body out and hanging on the whip like this. What the hell? Like like holding the car up? No, like like yeah. holding onto the car but outside of the car. While the person is driving, uh-huh. like the like the people they get outside of the car. And they so hang it's like ghost like riding? Yeah, ghost riding but like uh, the driver's still driving, you feel me? Oh okay. But them niggas are crazy. <laughs> They're going like seventy miles per hour like down like, a hill. Yeah. And they just like hopping out the window, like <laughs> 
and they just hang on like they get in the back of the like no I'd be like going fast when I go down like you know yes you go, you go <laughs> super fast bro them boys will sleep <laughs> Damn. literally what about um like when you were like going to school out here like where um is that where you like first got into music um well I used to live um in Kendall what is that oh um, that's where it is sh- sh- yeah that's where she is are they coming in here mm I guess yeah Yeah. But yeah, I used to live um I right, so when I had first came to Miami, mm-hmm. I lived um right there on one thirty seventh and eighty eighth. Mm-hmm. And it's like oh, damn what's the name of that? In Kendall? Yeah, those apartments. Um, um right across the Lowe's. Oh, I know what you're talking about. There. So that's was that was my first like house and stuff. And that yeah. little church that's right across from it. Uh-huh. Or I guess it's a church, but there, you know what I'm talking about? Next yeah. to the Lowe's? No, yeah. I, I went know. to there for pre-K. Uh-huh. For me. Then we moved to um, the Quartz at Kendall, mm-hmm. which is across Dante B. Fasso. You know where Dante B. Fasso is? By Lago Mar. Oh, like 157? Like, yeah, back there. Oh, the yeah. Little, the, the elementary right there. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so I lived in the neighborhood right in front of me. Mm-hmm. So I did there. I went um, kindergarten all the way to fourth grade. And then after that, I went to um, Kendall Lakes Elementary, and I moved to Tiffany Lakes, which is across the library. Why are you guys moving so much? Um, I don't know. I guess just bigger house, uh, bigger family, and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, like bigger house. We just tired of that house, I guess. Uh, you know I mean? And then yeah. um, that's when we moved to Tiffany Lakes, mm. right across the library, and that's when I went to Kendall Lakes for my fifth grade year. Mm. And then it was time to go to middle school. And then that's when I went to um, Revere Middle School. Mm-hmm. And then I went to the mix program. And what bro, is that? Like, mix? That shit was lit as fuck, bro. Like, I kid you not. Like, you know how, like, some schools, like, let's say, um, like, Arvida or, like, other schools, like, they had, like, um, magnet programs for, like, medical or, like... Yeah. Um, like police like, academy like veterinarian academies stuff, like yeah. different academies like this one only specified in um graphics design mm. and uh um, music engineer and producing mm. so like seventh sixth grade year i was already like making beats and on photoshop nasty as hell for me yeah my my seventh grade year we got like better um better equipment for the music um, upgrade the program because obviously we're leveling up and stuff. Yeah. And um, were you ever playing like any instruments before that, like um, like any like mm, not really the classes and stuff. Nah, we were not. We were just probably like taking music theory. Uh. So it's like one through thirty, mm-hmm. volume one. Uh. One through thirty, volume two, <laughs> like thirty times. Yeah. It's a lot. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And we would take tests on that, but I think all we did was master the keyboard, the piano. That's it. So you know how to play piano already? Before, um, before you started? Nah, I probably lost it, but I, I know how to make beats and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And I know obviously the keys and stuff, but I'm not like a like I I can go play a song. You yeah, like me. a Mozart. Like yeah, nah, 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 nah. I'm not like that. You feel me? But I can make some bangers. You feel me? I made yeah. some bangers and shit like that. So that's how you started. You started with the the production and everything. Mm-hmm. Was and it was it easy for you to be like to start, or was it, like was, was it like hard for you to learn how to do it? As far as the music theory, that was the only hard part. But, like, mm-hmm. making the projects in the class, like, mm-hmm. the the teacher, like, he just loved all my projects. But, well, like, was it hip-hop beats or was it just, like... It's just that, like, all right, he would give us, like, all right, for this month, we have to create a jazz project. Uh-huh. And everyone has to create a jazz project. Yeah. You feel me? So it's, like, no, like, bias to, like, what you create. You feel me? Because as long as it had, like, those jazz elements. Yes, the jazz elements, then you're good. Yeah. But it's just my shit was just so lit. He's just, like, he was just really vibing to it. And then he said... One month he's like free for all, uh-huh. and that's when I was like, okay, uh-huh. it's time to go ham. Were you guys using uh, so the makeup and everything? Mm, sixth grade year we were using mixed craft. That's uh-huh. just old as fuck. Yeah, super old. <laughs> and then seventh grade year I was using um, what was I using? I think Garage Band. Mm. All right, so we mastered that for a couple of months, and then we were supposed to get FL Studio, but we never did. I don't know why, cause I don't. I don't what, know you guys using Max? Yeah. Because FL is only for PC. Yeah, but the thing is that in our other classes for graphics design, mm-hmm. we were using um, this thing where you could use the desktop, Windows desktop. Oh, okay. Um, Portal. 
port. I don't know. So it's called, something called a portal. You feel me? Yeah. So you can use like um a bunch of like Windows um apps and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But seventh grade year, seventh grade year, I used GarageBand, and then my eighth grade year, I used Reason. Mm-hmm. And then I went to high school, and that's when I moved to Homestead. What about like when you were like switching the the DAWs? Like, was it hard for you to like transition from each one since you're using so many? Um, not really, because they were all kind of like the same, except for reason. That shit was completely different. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was that's what I asked. That's but uh, like the controls and stuff like that, they were kind of like the same. It was just the layout. Yeah, the layout of the screen. That shit tripped me the fuck out. <laughs> shit like that. But um, and that's when my parents got divorced, mm-hmm. and I wanted to go to like. Corey for like Sunset or like Varela like yeah. right there cause like bro I was living in Tiffany Lakes you feel me so it's like right there like, yeah where all and then, are and stuff mm-hmm. bro I had to move all the way to Homestead exit 2 wait with your mom or with your dad with my mom uh-huh. and my dad went to New York he left but we still kept the crib in Tiffany Lakes you feel me yeah and bro like I don't know everyone in Homestead was just like I don't know was it only you or did you have like um sibling any siblings at the time, it was only my one little sister, mm. and she's 17 now, and she lives in New York with my dad. And then I have my other little sister, who just turned seven, I think, yeah, mm. seven, and um, she lives with my mom in West Palm. Were they all born here, or were they born in Haiti, too? Mm. Thais, my 17-year-old sister, she was born in Haiti, mm-hmm. and then my other sister, she was born here. Oh, okay. Mm. But even like my other sister, like she doesn't really like speak French like that or Korean like that. Like, You're the only one. Yeah, I'm the only one. You know? So I keep in contact like with my grandparents in Haiti and stuff. Yeah. And I still talk to them and shit like that. So like when you when you when you are speaking like French, you mm. only speak it with your mom, or like do you have like a lot of people to practice with? Because I know sometimes people they learn the language mm. and like they don't have anyone to talk to or practice, so they forget it. So the thing is, is that like I speak Creole mm. only with my boys. You feel me? Because it's a slang. It's yeah. like. Me and you speak English, and, like, I'm talking, like, ghetto as fuck with that nigga over there, you feel me? Yeah. But I wouldn't talk like that with my grandparents, you feel me? But sometimes yeah. I do, like, whatever, like, because sometimes they do too, you feel me? Because my grandma speaks Creole. Hmm? My grandma um, speaks Creole. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't speak with you? Mm. She, she says, she talks to her, but she thinks that I get it, I don't really get it, so. No, but, yeah, like, it's pretty easy, though, like, it's pretty close to French, just, like, slang, you feel me? Yeah. But I speak that with my boys. My grandma only speaks French, you feel me? Like, just the other day, I kind of threw in, like, a little bit of Creole. Uh-huh. And she responded back, you feel me? But, like, I don't know. Just she, like, she nah, I, can't, I feel like I can't do it, you feel me? Like, I feel like I have to talk so proper to her, you feel me? Yeah. And then, like, with my mom, like, I only speak, like, I only speak English with her, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And, like, starting, like, about, like, four years ago, like, I started, like, only speaking Creole and stuff like that. Like, just to, like, make sure you don't forget it? Mm-hmm. That, too, because, like, bro, it's just, like, it's good to, like, yeah. keep the language and no, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, because sometimes you forget it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, like, sometimes you don't realize that it's that important until, like, you grow, like, you're older and, like, damn, I'm starting to forget it and you practice more, you know? Right. And plus, like, it's already hard enough for people to tell that I'm Haitian and stuff, oh, yeah. so, like, <laughs> yo, so if, I, if I, I talk like, so proper, like, they're going to be like, yo, you're just so Americanized. How, how, mm-hmm. how is, like, the reaction, like, when you, like, start speaking Creole? Oh, that's just, I love it, bro. It's just, it's, it makes me laugh every time, bro. Like, if I go to North Miami, yeah, bro, I don't know if you know North Miami, but there's that's, mad, there's mad Haitians. Is that Little Haiti? Huh? Little Haiti? I think Little Haiti is by there, yeah. Yeah. But North Miami has, like, mad Haitians. That's and, what that's all those are. Mm-hmm. And I go and I walk in the gas station, bro, I already peep everyone in the gas station that is Haitian and that's not Haitian. Off rip. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I can just tell, like, this is my country. You feel me? Can you tell me? Um, not really. Really? No, I couldn't. I don't know. I feel like you're too Americanized. You feel me? Oh, like yeah. those hardcore no, Haitians? I was born here. Yeah? Yeah. That's probably why. But my, mom, my mom's from Haiti. Mm-hmm. Like, she was like, she's like, well, she was like born there. She spent like most of her life there, but then she like came here and like, you know. She yeah, of course. Nice. She has to be. You feel me? That's how it is a lot too, bro. A lot of people come out here, but like the people that stay out there, mm-hmm. um, they, they, they work out there. So that's why they have to stay out there. Yeah. No, I guess here. But yeah, back to like, you know, your life here and the music and stuff. Yeah, I lost track of what, it, what the hell I was talking about. Um, um, what, what were, um, what were like you listening to back then, like, you know, to influence, um, you know, like the creative side of you, like making all that? Oh, true. What um, making? Well, growing up, like, bro, like, I don't know, like back then, like, I, it was like the era of like the new iPod. 
Mm. You feel me? Like yeah. everyone wanted the iPod Nano. Yeah. And I bro, like I, I begged for that shit. Like, yeah. Yo, please, like God say have that. You feel me? Because I just love music so much, bro. You want to listen to all the time. Uh, and the thing is, like I was not gonna pay for not one cent. You feel me? Yeah. Because I was already like, bro, making beats and like into graphics design. So the computer, like a Mac or any PC, bro, like that's my shit. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. And um, like I would I would go on LimeWire. I don't know if you use LimeWire. Nah, of course. Yeah. I use Lime, Frostwire, all that. All that, all that, you know all that good stuff, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, feel me? Yeah. So, like, my parents were like, yo, how the fuck, like, this little j- it's just, like, getting all this music on his damn iPod. Yeah, because like, I used to actually, buy, like, buy songs before, like, when yeah. I first that's what the, that's the thing, they're like, oh, we're going to have to buy you a $15, like, um... Gift card? Yeah, here, use it. I was like... I used to love getting those gift, gift like, cards, though, because I didn't like, know about LimeWire <laughs> back then, but then yeah. once I found out about it, I was like, yo, this is a fucking waste of money. Yeah, bro. I would just use that for, like, games on my Yeah, yeah. You feel me? But music, bro, mm Sorry, not not paying that time for that. No, of course, because there's like too much music. Like I have, like five thousand, six thousand songs on my iPhone. It's like bro, six thousand dollars. If I pull up my laptop, bro, you'll be amazed. <laughs> no, of course you're a DJ, so you gotta like. So like, bro, bro I, I have music that goes all the way to nineteen thirties. Bro. Yeah. Like, so I have nineteen thirties, nineteen forties, nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousands. Like every every decade, pretty much. Mm, every decade, and then the in, from the two thousands and up, I have the top one hundred billboards of every year. Oh. Yeah, and I have acapellas. Do you like listening to that stuff, or you just have it? Just have it. Bro, like every times, like I go and I just like listen to the thirties for for just no reason. Right. Yeah. Vibe. And you get like inspiration that way. Bro, there's a lot of bro. Like I don't know if you know like the wild thoughts. Yeah. Um, bro, they sampled the fuck out of this. You feel me from the song Maria? And it's crazy because before Wild Thoughts came out, uh-huh. I had the song Maria, the one that they sampled. Oh, for real? So in my head, I'm just like, damn, bro. Like, nobody, I, got, I got to go through this whole folder and see what nobody the Nobody like, knows that, though, because like, not a lot of people listen to like 1930s music. Uh, bro, like, I have this one that I want to sample so bad. Um, I forgot the name of it, but it's on my laptop. But, um, that's it. How'd you find it? Huh? How'd you, how'd you get it? Oh, I, th- I sent her the picture. Oh, no, but like, she never went there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and yeah. then, um, yeah, bro, I have music in there for like days, bro. But you don't ever get scared, like, like sampling something, like, you know, like, I might get copyrighted later on? Um. Or anything? Well, that's the only reason why I haven't done it yet, but I'll probably just do it, like, for my own self. Yeah. I don't really like maybe when I get in the game more and I find out more about that sampling stuff and like who to hit up like to sample mm-hmm. I mean like to copyright it or whatnot yeah but I don't know some people do get away with it bro like if I really mess with the beat a lot like, a lot of people about, don't even know a lot of people get like some. it's funny how like a lot of things can be sampled like a lot and very blatantly and they don't get away with it but then like someone like samples like Something like really tiny, and then they they get caught. Yeah. Like just I mean, no the sample is probably gonna be like six seconds. Yeah. But it's just a well known sample. You feel me? Yeah. So like. It'd be will. like, damn, I kind of know that. You feel me? <laughs> just like the Maria. Oh yeah, just like that. Yeah. So, I was like, damn. But another thing too is um when um when I was in Keysgate, I met someone named Ryan. <clears throat> you feel me? Yeah. And uh. He had pulled up to my party. He was a great hire than me. Mm. And uh, I had to a party at my house. And, like, a bunch of people that came. And uh, he had, like, like a super drunk. You feel me? Yeah, what? He had gotten super drunk. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. And, like, everyone had circled up in a big-ass huddle. Yeah. You feel me? And he was just rapping, like, for, like, 40 minutes straight. For real? Like, straight bars. And everyone was just, like... Uh. Where is and he had just moved down to Homestead just like I had moved down to Homestead. You feel me? Yeah. So, like, we were all just, like, fresh and new. But, like, the people that actually lived in Homestead, mm-hmm. those were the people at my party. You feel me? Yeah. So, like, it was like, oh, the new kid. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. And um, me and him started the music group NFU. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And then that's why I have, you know, my what dad is, name. NFU. What does NFU stand for? But originally, it, it standed for nigga fuck you. You feel me? Uh, but, yeah. like, we can't. Like beyond like interviews. Wait, wouldn't well, have been NFY or like you were just like swelling the U? Like, no, I just you uh, just like that. Yeah, yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> but we changed it to newly found and underground. Newly found underground. Yeah. So, what does that mean? Like we were we we're newly found like underground from the underground. Uh, yeah. Man, no, we just cut that ever since. But people to this day still don't really know what it means and stuff like that. Yeah, but um, were you rapping too back then? Um. Or like no. Nah. Now I just started rapping like, about like a year ago. 
mm. a couple of months ago. You get me? Yeah. And only because, like, a lot of people are pissing me off in the game. Like, what do you mean? Like, I don't know, a lot of stupid niggas, bro. A lot of retarded, ignorant people, you feel me? But besides that, like, I just make the music for myself, you feel so me? You're not, you're not really into, like, this new wave of, like, music that's hard now? As a DJ, I have to be. You feel me? Yeah. But in a sense, I don't have to be. You get me? Yeah. Like, I don't have to drop, mm-hmm. like, all this ignorant music, you feel me? It's just, it's a vibe, you feel me? What, what are you, like, more into, like, the ignorant stuff or, like, the more conscious stuff? Mm-hmm. It's not even that, like, it could be, like, conscious stuff, but still turn up. Yeah. You get me? Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, repetitive, like, stupid stuff, you feel me? Yeah. But, like, people will, like, like I'll do it just to please the crowd, you feel me? Because that's what I'm there for, mm-hmm. me, to please the crowd. So if I have, like, a bunch of little kids, like, in this era, mm-hmm. you feel me? I'll probably, like, drop some ignorant shit for them. But let them know what's up with the old shit, you feel me? Yeah. Like, the shit still exists, what if you, you like, feel me? What, um... Is there every time like you put like the ignorant stuff and they like it and then like you put something else and they like turn down? Um, in a sense, but they fuck with it so much and they know the lyrics that they have no choice but to sing it. You wow. feel me? Yeah. And it's like old songs that they know. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So like, like I wanna love you by Akon. Like, bro, everyone knows that song. Uh-huh. I wanna love. It. Everyone's gonna jam out to that. You feel me? Yeah. But it's so old. You feel me? But it's a hit. You feel me? So is that's it, what I drop. Is it old? Like well, I don't know. Like to me, old. It's like anything like past two thousand. Like anything like 90s? Oh, I mean, I put this is how we do it. Like, yeah. people jump bounce to that. You feel me? Or booty bass. Oh, yeah. Or 80s freestyle. Like, sometimes people don't chant to it. Some people do. It depends how lit and who's in the crowd. You feel me? Yeah. Because sometimes the crowd is whack as hell. And they're just, like, standing like this. How do, you, how, do you, like, how do you, like, turn them up when they're, like, you know, standing like that? And then they're just, like, not really, like, into it? Um, or they don't know? I don't know. Like, every crowd that I've had, like, you know, they just respect the way I DJ you feel me mm-hmm. like it's nice you feel me it's well, not so like how did the DJing all start like I don't know I was not even supposed to be a DJ but for it just happened cause remember I told you I was producing and engineering yeah. and first like that and graphics design and like just in school you feel me and wrestling cause I, I wrestled at Keysgate mm-hmm. and then um, my boy Ryan the one I had told you about yeah, the one that I started the NFU group with mm-hmm. which is now the record label so it was only you two that like and that, that started it that started, yes. Mm-hmm. But there's other people in it, you feel me? And yeah. they have their parts in NFU. Just like how in every other group, like, you have your part in the group, you feel me? Yeah. And uh, basically, like... Wait, is it a group or is it a collective? Like, individual rappers? Mm-hmm. I would just say, like, a record label. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. And then there's rappers. And there's obviously me, the DJ. Um, music engineers. Um... Videographers, we have that too, mm. um, and just I don't know, just a bunch of stuff like a one-stop shop. You get me? Yeah. So that's that. But Ryan, one day he had asked me, he's like, "Yo, um, Jaquez, there's a party that we're performing at, and um, you have to DJ." I was like, "What are you talking about?" Like, <laughs> I don't DJ, Ryan. You feel me? Yeah. And like I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, and I had no equipment. Did he mean like DJ? Like, oh, just play music? Or, like, actually, like, actually DJ? Like, actually DJ on the program. Uh uh-huh. Because it was virtual DJ. Yeah. For me, so it still has the stuff. Mm-hmm. And you can still DJ, like, without a, um, a controller or... Yeah, like, just go through your iTunes and make a playlist. Right? Mm-hmm. And you, like, click play, pause, and you mess with the stuff. If you yeah. Know. Some people are really good at it, I'm not going to lie, but I'm not with that shit. Like, uh-huh. I need an actual, like, turntable or something. You feel me? Yeah. And uh, basically, like, I didn't have no speakers, like, no controller, no nothing. Mm. I just brought my laptop with my music. And, like, I don't know, the party just got lit. And yeah. I was like, damn. Like, Where were you playing back then? Um, at that time? What was I playing? Yeah. Like, everything that I had. Still, all that music right there. Right. The 1930s. Like, not, obviously, I didn't play the 1930s music, but <laughs> my hard drive with all that music. Yeah. How long ago was that? What, um, that party? Yeah. Oh, that was... Beginning, beginning of like my junior year mm. or senior year around there. Uh-huh. I was still in high school. I was like probably like seventeen or sixteen. Oh okay. And then, yeah. After that, after that party, like I was like, damn, I, I like the way it feels, like the crowd and stuff. Like people like fuck with the music. Like, every time I dropped the song, I was like, whoa. Like, you feel me? I was like, damn, that's just pretty lit. So I was like, I saved up my bread, bought a little, like a little cheap mixer, mm. and then I just. You had a job back then, or you're just uh, like not nah, just hustling. Oh. Yeah, on Facebook, you know, like um, souls and hoes. I don't know if you know oh, about that. Nah, you're a sneakerhead. Hmm. Yeah, type, but oh. not now. 
You feel me? Because when, when the stinky game was lit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When it was lit and when shoes was like cool and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Now like with all the Yeezys, like no, all this stuff, it's just dead. Now. Dead now. It's like, everyone's like fucking. Do you up ever go to like DXC? Mm, I went like once or twice, but yeah. after that, like I was just on Facebook at home. Nice to be on souls and hoes all the time, like seeing like trying to get like you know, I was trying to get my better. Right? Yeah, true. Like, and like iPhones, two laptops, Blackberries. Yeah. Do you ever get a scam? Huh? Do you ever get a scam? Oh, for an iPhone, yeah. For real? Yeah. He's oh, like, wow. yo, it works, it works. The IMEI, uh-huh. all this stuff. And he's like, I worked for it. Like, I was like, damn, bro. And he gave it to me. Uh-huh. And I went to Verizon. It didn't work. I was like, like it was broken? Oh, no, yeah. like, just, it just couldn't work. Uh-huh. Couldn't connect. So I was like, fuck, I gotta do what I gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> sold that shit right after like you feel yeah. me yeah bro. you didn't try going after him mm-hmm but bro he was so much older bro he oh. was like 27 28 29 not that much older bro i was 15 uh 14 what's that <laughs> i, I would have like, gone after him like what the fuck <laughs> yeah but i couldn't really, like beat his ass nah because i'm like trying to sell an ipod right now it's broke like it doesn't work mm. like the, it just needs like a battery to be fixed mm. but like I be on um, what is it offer up? Yeah, I be on that too. That's yeah. just that's just a, a new come up. I wish I wish I had that back then instead of sold and holes because it was like I see so much more shoes there. Bro, there's a bunch of stuff I wish I had that I didn't have back then. You feel me? Yeah, like I feel like it's so much easier now, right? Then, mm-hmm. then yeah, it was. bro, it's way easier. Like on offer up, bro, we just go take a picture, boom, sell something. Yeah, yeah. and it doesn't even have to be shoes. Like can we like learn anything? Bro, I think I saw one time. People, were, they just took a screenshot of, of a piece of paper mm. and they were like offering services. I was just like, damn, y'all just really, <laughs> i just really taking advantage of this yeah, thing. Yeah. Like you feel me? <laughs> like, y'all just. Like, they to Craigslist. Yeah, like, it was like, this is not a new Craigslist. <laughs> but yeah, bro. Yeah, um, so when you were, like, after that, like, you, you were like, oh, you know, I wanna be, I wanna do this, like, for real now. So, like, what was the next step after that? Well, all right, so after I had through that party, you know, I kept doing part. I tried, like, getting into any party I could. Yeah. You feel me? And back then, like, parties was, like, not really a big thing, but I made it a big thing. Was it, was it still, like, when they were putting the parties on Facebook, like, those big? Mm-hmm. Or was it mm-hmm. just, like, those, that was, like, already dead? It was more like the, um, I don't know what it was. It was just, like, I guess, like, word of mouth. Mm-hmm. All the schools in South Florida. I like, don't so- understand. Like, South Florida... God damn you, Siri. <laughs> she said the whole thing. <laughs> she said everything I said? Yeah, she said the whole thing. It was like, wow. Like, oh my God. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, like, Homestead High, um, Keysgate, South Dade, um, Coral Reef, would South they, Ridge. But would they be, like, often? Like, they would have parties a lot? Like. Yeah, they would have parties often a lot. Like, the seniors. You get me? Yeah. And um, I, was just, I was, like, probably, like, a junior. Mm-hmm. But I would still make my way through, you feel me? Like, through the party and, like, bro... They they don't want like a small like little nigga DJ you feel me like, yeah and Weird. that's a big ass party you feel me like a Corey party that's just huge as fucking the Redlands yeah like, bro they turn those, those ranch parties yeah bro and I was like yo trust me I know how to DJ like bro and I had to like prove myself for a long time you feel me yeah and then I do this party at that big red crib in Color Bay yeah we call it the barn house you feel me bro two thousand people showed up to that crib bro kid you not bro the party only lasted one hour and forty five minutes. And on top of that, I had posted the flyer on Twitter. Guess how many retweets that shit got? A thousand? Nah, almost a thousand. It got like 856. Oh, damn. But nigga, that shit was so crazy, bro. I had people like from Europe come through, Tampa. From Europe? What the fuck? Yeah, it was only one nigga from Europe. Oh. Okay. For me, it was not like a bunch of people <laughs> I mean, from Europe. I think like a bunch of people like, yo, shit. Nah, it was not like, a, not like, like an EDC out. fest at my crib, nah. Yeah. It was just like, oh, um, I'm in town from, I just land, I'm like, it was more like a, I'm from Europe, uh-huh. and I, uh, I just landed in Miami, and I heard about your party. Yeah, cause that's where I used to see a bunch of like parties on Twitter and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I'll try to like pull up. And that's when Twitter was like kind of like, really popping. You feel me? Like Twitter's still pretty popular. Yeah, it is, but like, it was more like the innocent Twitter. Now oh, Twitter's oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Twitter says <laughs> Twitter's on some crazy shit now. Like, like, <laughs> it's like a porn site. Whenever like this is just crazy. Like, no, it's Twitter's funny as fuck. Now yeah. I, I fuck with it now. It was like more innocent back then though, like. For yeah, nah, but that shit's like, shit. I mean, Twitter, like, like compared to Instagram, oh, it's yeah. not the same, bro. No, of course not. So, I mean, like Instagram to everyone is like a portfolio, and like yeah. Twitter is where it's like. It's like used for like the six feet, you see, like it's a portfolio, like everyone I interview. Yeah, that's how it be. No, but like Twitter is like that's where you go to go like to be wild. Like, mm-hmm. 
That's where all that crazy shit happened. But yeah, um, so like when you did that party, like so like the cops came. Yeah, the cops came. Like I was gonna show you real quick, oh. but um, bro, there was two thousand people there. I had a cause like the house that I had, it had like nurseries. Like nursery homes, yeah, houses for like plants. Oh, okay. For me, yeah. And uh, they didn't have any plants in them, so they're just like abandoned. You feel me? Mm. But I put like a huge tarp, and I had my boys help me out. We covered the whole ho- the whole um nursery home, mm-hmm. and that was a hot boxing tent. Oh, okay. and you had to pay a special price to get in there. True. Mm. Like you yeah. automatically had to have bud, and you had to pay like an extra like five or ten to get in there. Yeah. And then I had everyone on the ground level floor, which is the grass, and then the first floor, which is the balcony. Which is where I was DJing, and then the second floor. Mm-hmm. And bro, that shit was just crazy. The hot boxing tent is like right here. Hmm? I mean, that's the thing, like, as DJing, like, I don't know, I never really played any of my songs. For me, why not? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like my songs in general, like I don't know. I never played them. Yeah. But other people's song, like the other people that be rapping, like my boys that are in the group, mm-hmm. like I always played their songs. You put you ever put like their vocals on your beats, so you could play them. Mm, yeah, like well, not on my beats, but like let's say they made a song, mm-hmm. I would like tune it down on the low, so yeah. it's, you could still hear their vocals. You feel me? But the beat goes off. Yeah. And then I'd mix it in with like let's say like mask off or something, you feel me? So it'd be mm-hmm. them rapping on mask off. Oh okay. So like that's just pretty lit and bougie. Like, well, you can't yeah. hear the Migos, right? Like, hmm? No, you can't hear it's, oh, it's okay. instrumental. Yeah. And then after that that's when the clubs like started like hitting me up and like blowing up my phone, like, yo, you do that party, you do that party. Mm-hmm. All by yourself and I was like, Yeah and they they kinda wanted me to get into like promoting. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, I didn't want to be a promoter, I just wanted to DJ. Do you, ever, like, do you ever, like, dabble into promoting? Like, mm, no, the whole, the whole time I had to do that. Mm. The whole time until, like, now. Now I don't really have to do it so much. You feel me? I just post a flyer, everyone pulls up, I get paid. Yeah. And I get paid to teach it. So when you were, like, promoting, like, how was that, like, when you first started? Like, how were you getting people, like, to come? Mm. You, had, you had to, like, sell tickets or like, you just had to, like, post it up and stuff? I had to post, like, all right, so I used to DJ at La Covacha, mm. which is the cove. A lot of people used to go there back then. Uh-huh. You feel me? Like, on Halloween? No, nah, like every Thursday. Oh. Every damn Thursday. Every Thursday. That was the function every Thursday. And uh like I had to post a flyer and bring like what? As many people as I can. Mm-hmm. But like minimum ten. For me and I get a bottle, a drink, um, DJ and I get paid to DJ at the end of yeah. the night, for me. Mm-hmm. And uh it was like five bucks a head for like girls and guys, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So like girls were getting free. Bring 20 girls, they all get in free, and I get paid for bringing, like, 20 girls to okay. just drink with me. So, you easily be able to do that? Or huh? Was it easy to do that? Yeah, because, like, having me, like, as a DJ, like, they just, they didn't feel like like they had to be, like, in the crowd, you get me? Oh, okay. Be like, just, like, be with yeah, you guys could vibe out with me and stuff, you feel me? Uh, yeah. So, like, it was, like, more, like, interesting for them and more fun, you feel me? Yeah. Like, I don't know, it just, like, brought them more into it, you feel me? And then what happened, like... What was next? Like, that was good, like, for, like, a couple of months. Mm. And then we all, I, we, I used to also DJ at The Hangar. Mm. But it, back then it used to be called Therapy. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I did Therapy, I did La Covacha. And then that's when I started, like, really fucking with Invite Miami. Mm. Um, I don't know if you know Jake. Um, I know Invite Miami. But, well, that's who, like, I signed the contract with. So, like, I just stay, like, loyal to them. You feel me? Yeah. Like, as far as DJing, like, I don't go to space. Stuff like that. And if I do go to space, like, I let them know before. Mm. And then I make sure, like, I'm allowed to. You feel me? Yeah. I mean, I, I am allowed to. You feel me? As a human being, I'm allowed to go there. And I'm allowed to go DJ. But, like, out of respect, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I let them know. You feel me? Yeah, because you're part of their, like, team and stuff. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's a team. And I'm not going to go to them. Yeah. You feel me? But it's all love. Like, space and heart. Like, it's all love. You feel me? Yeah. But <laughs> night of Saturday, Friday, <laughs> it's business time. You feel me? Yeah, like, of we're, course. We're, we're competing. You feel me? But, like, as far as, like, with bookings and stuff like that, like, I remember, like, um, ASAP Ferg at the hangar. Mm-hmm. That was lit as hell. DJ Mustard pulled up. Um, me and Talib got to DJ, like, open up. Got so to meet ASAP Talib, Ferg. Like, DJing the same time as you? No, nah, Talib, he's been DJing for a while. Mm-hmm. For me, he was more advanced into the DJing. Yeah. 
like since he was probably like, I think like 11 he's been DJing so since I was producing mm-hmm. it's like reverse you get me like when he was growing up he was DJing he was DJing you feel me and when I was growing up I was producing and then now and then now it's like switch. we're switching you feel me <laughs> so now he's like learning how to produce and still also mastering and DJing yeah. and I'm learning how to um DJ, but also master. So, do you guys teach each other? Uh, sort of, kind of, in a way. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, yeah. DJing, he's definitely showed me a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, producing, like, we, we haven't really, like... We have a couple of times, but not really, like... We don't have a studio yeah. for us to vibe in. You feel me? But, of course, when we do have our own studio, like, we'll definitely be vibing there 24-7. How do you get, like, in the mood to, like, make beats and, you know, and do all that stuff? Um... Honestly, bro, I just listen to music constantly throughout the day. Like, I don't listen to the radio no more. I stopped listening to the radio, like, four or five years ago. But how do you know what, what's popping? Uh, like, I don't know, word of mouth, you feel me? Like, not even word of mouth, but, like, um, the internet. You listen to what other DJs are playing? Mm, or I go to the club one night, you feel me? Yeah. And I, I just stay relevant to, like, rappers and rappers' music, you feel me? Yeah. Like, back then, I would go to the hot new hip-hop. Mm. Feel me? That's it's like tells you everything that comes out. You feel me? Yeah. And which ones are the hottest songs? All the new mixtapes. All so that. Do stuff. you have a lot of rappers that are going up to you like, "Yo, play my song, play my song." Yes and no. You feel me? Yeah. Like to a certain extent, a lot of people do, but to a certain extent, like people just sleep on themselves. Really. Like, as far as what I can do, you feel me? Yeah. Because bro, I DJ at heart. A lot of people go there like around like from around the world like spring break. You know, summer vacation, like, there's a lot of people coming out. Labor Day weekend, Memorial weekend. Yeah. And, like, honestly, it doesn't take me take much for me to, like, like fuck with the song, you feel me? Like, mm-hmm. if it's good. You feel yeah. me? Like, oh, age of Christ, come through to the studio. Let's, let's just vibe and make a song, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Whatever, we vibe, I help make the song. Bro, like, that's more than enough, you feel me? And if I'm vibing to it already, like... You don't want to play it. Like, I'm just going to want to play it at the club, you feel yeah. me? But, like, people just be like, yo, check out my song. I'm like, bro, you didn't even send me an email. Like, yeah. the actual song or, like, the WAV file. Like, oh, you just, you're you going to make me go to work for you? Like, yeah. send me, like, uh, help me out. I help you out. You feel me? Yeah, like, don't make me do all this work. Right. You, you feel me? But, I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of people, like, a lot of locals that I do fuck with. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, I don't know. You've probably done interviews for a bunch of them. You feel me? Probably. But, like, who, who, who do you fuck with out here? Oh, uh, let's see. Who did you? All right, let me just go down there. What is? <laughs> yeah, I did a lot of rappers. Yeah, you did do a lot of rappers, bro. Let's see. Yeah, because what what I would mostly want to focus on is with the producers because the producers they like ne- they never get as much pro- um like publicity or like. Right, and the thing the thing is, the thing is what's what's good about me is that like it's like the whole package. Yeah, you, do. you feel me? It's yeah. not just like oh. I'm an artist. Yeah. Oh, I'm a producer. You're like self-sufficient because yeah, like, you, you bro, like if I wanted to make my own website, I could make my own website. You feel me? Yeah. If I wanted to make my my own flyers, I could make my own flyer. If I wanted to produce my own beat, I can produce my own beat. You feel like that's important nowadays, or just to stick to one thing? Um, in a sense, you have to like know it because you don't want to start like six things at once. Yeah. Me? So like, obviously, I did producing in the beginning. Mm. And um, mastered that You feel me But not yeah. to, a, to a certain extent You feel me I mastered it to a certain extent To move around But how do you like Stay focused So that you know You're not doing like Oh I'm gonna do this now I'm gonna do this now I'm gonna do this now you Well know? that's the thing Like I stopped producing mm. You get me And I just only DJ Cause I had tore my ACL In high school Yeah And I was only wrestling In like high school You get me mm. And then that's when I tore my ACL I had to be on bed rest For mad long and then I was just practicing DJing. So mm-hmm. I just did that. And I kind of produced too, but like the thing is, is that there was like no motivation into producing, you feel me? Yeah. Because like as starting up as a producer is kind of hard building up your name as a producer. Unless your beats are like banging and you have someone like really rapping on it. You get me? I mean, in I a like, sense. Isn't it like you just put out your beats and then people just come to them? Well, that too, but like then again, like I didn't have a YouTube channel. I was just making beats. You feel me? Yeah. So like I didn't really know how to market myself as well. Yeah. So then I like just now went. If you do, you'll probably oh yeah, now if I make a beat, like oh yo, let me hop on your beat. You yeah. Feel me? And that's only because I went through DJing. You feel me? Yeah. So I built my name through DJing, which was a lot easier in a way. I I see, but like it was kind of hard too because I had to prove myself a lot. But do you only want to do like 
the beats if you start making beats again mm. would you only do hip hop or would you do like you no know, other no, 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 like no. EDM or like no I do like a bunch of reggae dance hall yeah. reggae tone or like do you do like soca yeah I could do that do you listen to that when you're in Haiti bro I have all that good music bro <laughs> all that good music I could even do like 80s freestyle bring it back you feel me on some yeah. like um, ski mask, um, catch me outside. You feel me? Like <laughs> yeah. some, some like trippy shit. You feel me? But I can make a, like a hard trap beat or like, um, like a love song, an R and B song. Yeah, shit like that. But what I really want to like focus more on now is like making beats now, and um, I don't know, like mixing and engineering other people's vocals and stuff like that. You plan on opening up a studio? Um, eventually yes, but I kind of want to just have one at my crib. Yeah. You get me? But like you're gonna But not like a big studio for everyone to come to like on the daily you feel Yeah. Me? Like <laughs> like making money off the studio and stuff like that. Just like to, a place to go to record and mm-hmm, like my like my homeboys, stuff like that, other artists that I that I fuck with and shit like yeah. that. Have you um you have experience recording with people? Yeah, I've been recording like um my whole group for like the longest. Uh-huh. When we can, you feel me? When I had Pro Tools, like at my crib, like Ryan would come, mm-hmm. record eight songs in like ten minutes. For real? Yeah, just like freestyle. You with, feel with, oh, okay. Yeah, just freestyle, okay. not like an actual song song. But like we did make songs, but we oh, went to. Did they come out good? Uh, yeah, they they came out straight. You feel me? Like we could vibe out to them and stuff like that. But not like decent quality. You feel me? Oh, yeah. Not like um complex quality. Gary B makes it quality or trippy yeah. quality. You feel me? Or notorious quality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. You feel me? I haven't really heard your. Um, no, cause I make some engineer. Yeah, I engineer too. Holy shit, my Twitter's blowing up. Hey, you tweet something? Nah, I just been talking about this crazy ass hurricane, dog. Oh no, like shit's coming. <laughs> Damn, bro, people are asleep. You prepared, right? Mm, in a sense, yes, yeah. mentally. You feel me? Yeah, cause the the one um, in Texas that was pretty bad. Yeah, bro, my boy Brandon, yeah. he drove out there. What do you mean? Like he packed um. To go help out. Yeah, he packed a U-Haul with mad water bottles. And uh, he went out there with Zoe to go, like... That's that's why you can't get water in public right now? Yeah, they, they took all that <laughs> shit, bro. Dead ass. No. <laughs> so, like, what, what's their plan? Like, they're going out to, like, help out? I mean, they just came back. They came back on yesterday. Uh-huh. But they were there, like, all weekend since Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. Like, just giving out mad water. They were on live on their Twitter, I mean, Instagram. Mm-hmm. And, bro, like, they, they're, like, alligators and snakes just, like, swimming around and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's 20, f- 20 feet deep of water, like, it was just like, for- crazy as yeah, shit. No, I heard it was because, like, it floods so much because, like, they have, like, no drain, s- drain system out there. That's wild. Because they don't have, like, any canals or, like, any, like, those, what are those sewers? Mm-hmm. Like, it was like, like, crazy out there. I mean, um, what was I gonna say? So, um, with your mom, she was um, she's a cook, right? She's a chef. Oh yeah, she's a professional chef. That's what I call her. But she's my, she's my chef. You feel me? But, <laughs> right. Um, like her, her story is crazy. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. my mom, like she should just have her own interview by herself. <laughs> but, um, she was, like, my dad, the one that was that raised me. Yeah. Um, he had like told her to go back to school. Because, mm-hmm. like, that's what she really wanted to do, cooking. You know? Yeah. So she was like, oh, why don't you just go back to school? And so she went to the Cordon Bleu. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, like, up north, but not too yeah. up north. She was already cooking, like, before? Yeah, that? she was already, like, doing, like, her own catering stuff, but, like, local catering. Yeah. I mean, like, stopping by, like, the nail salon. Mm-hmm. Um, catered to all the people out there. And then, like, she would do, like, weddings, communions, cook for, like, the whole community and stuff she like that. Was it only Haitian food, or is it... Mm-hmm. Yeah, Haitian food. Mm-hmm. And then, that's when we moved to Homestead. I put her on IG, mm-hmm. you feel me? So she started building up her, like, image. Yeah. You know what I mean? And doing all the marketing and everything. Mm-hmm. And I kind of put her on to the marketing. But, like, as far as, like, her hard work and grind, like, that was all, yeah. you feel me? But she, she didn't, I think... Two years or three years at the Cordon Bleu. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many years, but she graduated cum laude, so like honors, uh, and then she got a job automatically at the Ritz Carlton. Which oh oh that yeah like was she was she always like coming home and like making new stuff for you guys? She would bring back like stuff from the school. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like everything she would make that day, she'd bring it back. Mm-hmm. Like I remember one time she brought like octopus. Like I'm like what the. <laughs> you know, ate octopus before that? No, nah, I had Cal- not, calamari. No, I had calamari, but not octopus. It, that's that's what that is. Nah, you think so? What squid then? Squid. Uh, 
squid is squid. Uh, no. Calamari is octopus. Why do they call it calamari? That's like the that's the that Japanese way of saying it. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> but like it was not like fried though. You get me? No, it was yeah, just like regular actually, like octopus. Have just you, like, I, I right there this, on the plate? You feel me? I saw this thing on Twitter. They have like <laughs> moving stuff. Still, like yeah, 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 they have they have octopus. They like it's like dead. But it's like not really dead. And then you drop the soy sauce like, yeah. and it starts moving. Yeah. yeah that's that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, it just, I'm like, I can't, I can't eat this. <laughs> you didn't eat it? No, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Would you eat it if it was cooked, like it was like fried. Yeah, if it was fried. You wouldn't, you wouldn't tell like what it was. Nah, if it was fried, I would have probably ate it. Yeah. But it, it was like a purple octopus. <laughs> I was just like. You eat a lot of seafood? Huh? Yeah, I eat a lot of seafood. Like my favorite is shrimp alfredo pasta. Uh, That's my favorite. Hers especially, and I make that shit too. Yeah. Like you cook? Yeah, I cook some crazy food. I don't know. I guess I have it in the blood. Yeah. But like, I don't go off like any recipes or anything like that. Even like when I open up a box or something, I just throw the box. Away. Just <laughs> cook it my own way. You get me? No, I can't. Like, I think that's what stops me because I'm like, damn. If I cook, I have to like follow a recipe, and no, I know. I, I never, I never listen to the box. For real? Yeah. <laughs> Dump all the pasta. Oh, then that's why I can't cook because I'm like, uh, I gotta follow all these directions. Yeah, like, I, I feel wanna, like sometimes they're wrong, bro. You could just take, like, experiment. For just real? taste it yourself. I feel like if I experiment, so I always, take, I always learn shit. Like, I always, <laughs> I always learn it. I don't know, you just gotta try not to, bro. Not because, like, I, I try cooking chicken breast, and then, like, I don't wanna cook it, like, not enough because then I don't wanna get, like, salmonella, but I don't wanna cook it too much because then I don't wanna. Oh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that, bro. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> It, it, like, cause you could have like your chicken in the um, freezer, you take it out and you put it in the in the sink. Mm-hmm. For me, defrost it. And Wait, then, what? The chicken breast? Yeah. Oh. You go defrost it. Um, you literally wash your hands. Mm-hmm. Grab the chicken breast. You walk, like I don't know if you walk, you could wash it if you want, but you, I usually just put it in. Nah, cause I buy mine at BJ's. They have like in bulk. They already have the seasoning and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I just like do that. And no, I just, no. Put it I just get regular chicken breast, like not yeah. seasoned. Yeah, like, cook out like you cut up the fat and stuff. Mm, at times I have to like at the end. Yeah. Like cause it's like round and then pointy at the end. Yeah. Like, just yeah, you snip it right there. Mm-hmm. Put it like all six chicken breasts in a um, plastic container. Mm-hmm. Put mustard. And then like um, complete seasoning, Monster. yeah. I don't know that's what my mom does. I just uh, watch her do it, so I just do it. You feel oh, me? Yeah. I'm like, fuck it. It Did tastes. It's uh, when it, when she gives it to me, it tastes good. So I guess I'm gonna just do it. What about Haitian food? food? Like, what's your favorite day? Oh, I like gabuit and some goat, fried goat. Oh, that's just fuego. And then juri cole, which is um mixed rice. And yummy, kind of like kungri but dry. Yeah, you feel me. And then I don't know if you know Mangoes, the Haitian restaurant on Eureka. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's like family right there. That's your family? Yeah. And the one on um, 88th too, that's family there. Um, Le Lombi. Oh, really? Yeah, family. Oh. So like when we pull up there, it's always love. Like, I mean, obviously when I go alone, I have to pay for my food. Oh, yeah. But when I go with my mother, like, it's not really so much like that, you know? Yeah. It's always love. They're like, no, 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 I can't let you pay. For me? Yeah. But when it's me, I'm just always like... They don't, like, they don't stop you? Huh? No, nah, they don't. They don't have to take, they take my money. <laughs> my, my grandma cooks a lot of Haitian Except food. when I go to Mangoes, though, in, on Eureka. Yeah. No, but my grandma cooks a lot of Haitian food. But, like, like to me... I, I wasn't really, like, too into um, Haitian food because of the way she cooks it. Like, she makes everything taste like tomatoes. No, for real? Yeah, she yeah, probably used to make that tomato paste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm, not really, I'm not really into tomatoes. Like, I don't really like the taste. I don't like ketchup or, like, any of that stuff. So, like, she would always cook it. That's, like, the only Haitian food I would, like, you should eat, like, all, you know, most of the time. It's, mm-hmm. so, like, whenever I thought of Haitian food, I thought, like, tomatoes. Like, of tomatoes. And at, at Mangoes, every Sunday, like, they don't sell, like, regular food. Like, they only sell soup, and they close at 11. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the other restaurant, I think they close on Sundays. They don't even open. Yeah. Yeah. But every Sunday, it's, like, a tradition. You go to church, come back, eat your soup. You feel me? Or you wake up in the morning, eat your soup. Patties, Haitian patties. Mm-hmm. For me, it's called soup jumu, which is like pumpkin soup. Mm-hmm. That's just fuego as fuck. That's good for October. Yeah, <laughs> October. I mean, you like it's better in October. You get me? Because like, just the pumpkins are right there. Yeah. But you can still go to Publix and buy like the pumpkin, chopped up pumpkin. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty easy, but real good too. And on New Year's, that's what we eat too. Oh, yeah, soup oh yeah. Now we use um squash. Well, squash. Soup, that, that's what it is. Squat, the oh, pumpkin. Like, Pumpkin squash. Pumpkin squash? Yeah. No, it's the yellow squash. No, we don't use that. We uh, use the more orange one. 
Oh, no, we use the yellow one. Oh, well, yeah, that one's good, too. Because if you don't eat it, then you're going to get bad luck for the year, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> so they say, you feel me? Yeah. But it's still still good soup. And then there's another soup called bouillon. Uh-huh. And it kind of tastes like the soup at um, Pollo Tropical. The Caribbean soup mm. kind of tastes like that. That's just fuego as fuck. Too. I never had it, so I don't really know what that tastes like. Look, I, probably, you, I probably had a soup, the bouillon. But bouillon? Like, if you go to uh, Pollo Tropical and you get the Caribbean soup, you'll mm. probably fuck with that shit. Uh-huh. And dump, like, a bunch of rice in it. Uh-huh. Some um, Nicaraguan showed me that. To put, like, the, your rice in the soup. I've never done that in my life. I, uh, I never done that. Spanish thing. Yeah, because I have a lot of Spanish friends that do that. No, I just look over like, damn, I used to like this soup. Uh. Eat that shit. Um, you were recently, like, you know, like, with, in jail, right? Yes, I was. You want to talk about that? I mean, yeah, now I can, you feel me? Now <laughs> now is a better time to talk about that. I was going to say something else, not, like. Like what? I don't know. I was trying to think of a word, like, other than, like. You're in jail. <laughs> I can't think of anything. So like, Almost got extorted it. into the <laughs> game. Like, never see my face again now. <laughs> um, basically, I had just got caught up in a situation. You feel me? Um, I was driving someone else's whip. Mm. Um, and the owner of the whip was not even here. Like, they were in another state. Oh. And I got pulled over by the feds. Were you speeding? Nah, bro. I was not the most amazing driver ever. you feel me like I'm not on no stupid goop shit like switching lanes like you know yeah. I drive you feel me that's why I got my license cause yeah. I actually drive when like other people in Miami you feel me yeah and I was just driving down Sunset Drive like chilling you feel me like mm. it was me and my my three boys alright mm. and like that weekend like we had to go cut a cake for my boy's little sister and she has cancer you feel me oh. but that Saturday it was her birthday you feel me mm. and uh Whatever, we'll, we woke up Saturday morning because we stayed there Friday night. Mm. And we were going to stay there Sunday night, too, and Saturday night. Yeah. So we woke up. I told my boy, like, oh, um, we got to go get um, haircuts. And I have to go get my equipment. You feel me? Whatever, we did all that. And then now I picked up my other two boys. And we were going to go back to the hotel mm. to cut um, the birthday cake. And, nigga, we just got pulled over, bro. But... Like, they just pulled us over while we were like, literally, we had just left Kendall. Yeah. And we were about to get on the highway and they just pulled us over right there on Sunset Drive. Damn. So they, they saw, oh, this is in your car and this is in... Your, At first, like, they saw it like an expired tag, you feel me? Yeah. And then they pulled us over, we put the windows down, and I had a gig that same night too. Oh, damn. So, yeah. Wait, it, at Heart? No, in Pembroke Pines. Oh. But I was supposed to also attend Heart 2 right after. Oh. You feel me? Uh-huh. So, and on top of that, we had to cut the cake for his um little yeah. sister. Yeah. So his mother was expecting us, the little sister was expecting us. And then and where, where, where you guys at? In fucking jail. That's where we were at. That shit was crazy, bro. The fucking feds, at first, you know, he questioned us. He was like, he didn't even ask for my license or nothing. Mm. You feel me? He just started automatically, like, Trying to like put us like in jail, you feel me? It's like, not illegal, huh? It's not illegal to a certain extent, you feel me? And yeah. that's why like everything got dropped. Thank God, you feel me? Mm. But he, we confessed to all the bud that we had in the whip, you feel me? And then he goes and he pulls out this random bag, bro. And bro, we told the dude, like the officer, after we confessed to all the marijuana that we had, mm. um, he was like. Oh, if I bring the dogs, I'm going to switch the whole whip. We, we all look at each other. Me and my three boys were like, all right, for sure, bro. Like, you can go ahead. You feel me? Like, yeah. There's nothing else that you can find in this car. You feel me? Because mm-hmm. we just gave you everything that we had. Yeah. And then he goes, boom, pulls out this random bag. Me and all my boys look at each other. We're like, what the fuck is that? We all start shitting bricks, bro. G shit. And he goes and he puts us um, a felony for a controlled some substance. And yeah. then... yeah. Uh-huh. And then another felony for marijuana. He took, like, all the marijuana I had, the marijuana that so my other So the bag wasn't, had. like, wasn't weed? It was what? something else? The, the control bag? substance? It yeah. was meth. For real? What the fuck? Yeah, bro. And, nigga, none of us in the whip do that shit. You feel me? Yeah. And, nigga, I don't look like a meth head, bro. And, nigga, I don't do meth. I only smoke. You feel me? What did they do? Like, check your pee to make sure you did it? Nah, bro. They, bro, they didn't even send the police report to the judge. Like, they made it seem like nothing ever happened. They were, they were so scared. They were shitting bricks to the offices. For real? Yeah. Yeah, they were just shitting. But shit. why? If they're, if they're gonna, like, were they, like, Because, look, me and all my boys, we said that it wasn't ours. 
Yeah. So when all of us say it's none of ours, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And on top of that, they don't find it on us. Yeah. Like, nigga, they didn't find it on us. They found it in the whip in the glove compartment that was closed. You feel me? Yeah. And on top of that, the whip is none of ours. So, uh, so like, you feel me? It was the other person, the car. The owner of the vehicles. Yeah. Well, I don't even know, but that's what the police said. You feel uh, me? Yeah. But, yeah. That shit. Just, Fuck that situation. Yeah, it's a fucked up situation at the yeah. end of the day, you feel me? But um like thank God everything got dropped, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Big wake up call for me and all my boys, you feel me? Yeah. And that also opened a lot of doors too for me, you feel me? What do you mean? Like now like my mom doesn't want me in Miami anymore, obviously. You feel me? Cause, like She doesn't want you in Miami? Yeah, she feels like it's just bad bad energy, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So she's like, oh, now you're just going to go across the world to, like, Vietnam and go DJ. So I was just like, oh, all right, for sure. Do they have parties out there? Yeah, bro, like, huge club scene, huge club scene. But, like, they do more, like, um, electro and kind of, like, hip-hop, too, you feel me? She supports, like, the whole DJing and producing. Oh, yeah, now my whole family does. But at first, they did not, you feel me? Like, they yeah. wanted me to go to, like, school. Be, be like, a doctor. A doc. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You already know the play. Yeah. You feel me? Like, that's how every Caribbean or any islander, yeah, their parents are. You feel me? They want the best, but they don't know that if you, like... There's opportunities. There's opportunities, and when you put, like, let's say, why would you make your son or daughter want to be something that they're not? Yeah. You know? they like, if they want to already be something that they're good at, like, you might as well just put that whole 150%, 250% yeah. into them. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, let's say they want to be, like... A piano player or a guitar player or a flute player, like anything, you feel me? Or not even that, or a chef, like, make sure that they're the best at that, you feel me? Yeah. And now that's how they're they're feeling, you feel me? But then again, you also have to, like, let them know that you're serious, too, you feel me? Yeah. Cause it's, that it's just not, like, a phase, you feel me? Some people play like, yeah, cause baseball, like, football, like, they do a bunch of sports, but, like, that's not what they want to do, you feel me? Yeah, because I feel like that's what parents just don't want you to do, like, just, like, be going. They don't want you to follow, they don't want yeah. you to follow, you feel me? But yeah. that now it's it's not like that. They see that I'm not following that. This is actually what I do. Yeah. You feel me? So it's a lot easier now. Like, my family, I get to chill with them more. Mm-hmm. I get to, like, see them, talk to them more and stuff like that. It's more cool because, like, I didn't see them for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, two years I did not see my family. Right. I had moved out of my aunt's crib and, like, that shit was crazy. Like, I know I was dodging phone calls, like, all that right. stuff. I was like, damn. Like, you ran away or you just, like... No, I didn't run away. Like, they knew where I was. You feel me? Like, right. I would still keep in contact with my mom, with my dad, but just not so often. Yeah. And I didn't really see them. Like, I would, my mom was in West Palm and my dad was in New York. Mm-hmm. And I was living with my aunt and uncle. My aunt. They're not going to come, like, drive and come see yeah. me. Yeah. Nah, it was just more like a hello, hi, goodbye. Uh. Hello, hi, goodbye. Like that. Yeah. But now, like, I came back and... Chilling. They support the movement, and you know my mom has a TV show now, so I su- I support her one hundred fifty percent. She supports me. Which channel is she on? Oh, uh, on Comcast. She's on channel two hundred two, if I believe. Let me see. It's called Taste the Islands mm-hmm. with her and Chef Ari. Uh, they make like um, my mom makes Haitian food, and Ari makes Jamaican food. So like they really like they infuse like both the foods together, and they make some crazy shit. What about um? I saw you were. Yeah, Comcast two or two. And then they can go to www.createtv.com, mm-hmm. and then you could search like what like TV channels you have and stuff like that, and see oh. what she could be on. And look, that's Chef Ari. He's Jamaican, and Lisa Lee. She's from um. The NBC, she's like the host on NBC. Which what show? The, the just like America? NBC, like news. Oh okay. So she hosted that. Oh so. the. Yeah, they some crazy ass food. And then my mom, she just won a trophy, um, against. Thirty six countries. Deep. So like she okay. she cooks for the um. The embassy of Haiti. Do you guys ever see like do you ever see you and your mom like? Do anything together, like you know, like on, the, on the, the TV show. Yeah, like doing music on the TV show or anything. Like, well, not even music. Like, I probably just even cook with her. To be honest with you, yeah. Like a, someone told me the other day, like they don't see me as a DJ. They see you as a chef. Yeah, and they tripped me out for a little bit because uh-huh. I was just like, damn, like, what if you feel me? Like, cause yeah. bro, I I like cooking a lot. You feel me? I make some crazy ass food. You ever bring yourself? Hmm. You ever bring yourself? 
Oh uh, yeah, a couple of times. <laughs> Back then, for me now, I try not to bring myself. Yeah. But there was this one time when my mom had caught the plantains on fire right. at the old crib in Homestead. Uh-huh. And the whole microwave caught on fire and she took the plantains to the backyard, you feel me? But they were yeah. in oil. Uh-huh. And like, I didn't know when you threw water on oil. No, yeah, it's That shit it's, explodes, nigga. It's supposed to, it's supposed to cold it. Um, like, let it, like, let it cool off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, not me, down. I got a big ass bucket of water uh-huh. and I threw that shit in there and bro, a flame that was like 20 feet in the air. It just went. <sighs> Right in my face, Damn. like all on my eyebrows and my hair, uh, and my my little sister Thais. <laughs> but nigga, that shit was crispy, bro. Crispy. Damn. Crispy, crispy. My sister, she just, <laughs> she's like, "Are you okay?" And I was, and I'm trying to make it seem like I don't know what just happened, but like in my head, like I don't know if you ever seen Two Face from Batman. Yeah. I, that's what I felt like. Oh, I was just imagining that. You yeah. feel me? I was just like, yo. That, that reminds me that Where's reminds my me face of, at You feel me That reminds me of a picture I saw on Twitter It was like This guy He got burned And like His um His brother Whatever got burned too And they were like You know mm. How they like Turned like white Like they're like Their whole face like, Yeah But it said like When you haven't stolen something For a month And it feels like <laughs> You're like Damn That's fucked up That's fucked up That's real fucked up <laughs> But not nah, Bro my, my eyebrows were crispy and My hair was crispy um, and then I went back to the dinner table Cause you feel me like Cause they all went inside to go look at the microwave So yeah. I was outside, I dumped the water <laughs> Big ass flame My sister was still outside eating, she saw it She's like oh my god are you okay uh. And everyone came back, you feel me Yeah. So I go back to the dinner table And everyone's just sitting there like eating and stuff And they're just like They're like smiling, they're like yo uh. Something smells burnt, you uh, feel it's me It's like burning flesh, it's like a weird it's, smell There was not even flesh, it was just burning like hair Like uh. crispy ass hair, you feel me They look at my eyebrows, they're like What's wrong with your eyebrows? I was like, hmm, what do you mean? I'm like that. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, and then that's when I told them eventually what happened. I was like, yeah, I didn't know when you threw water on yeah, hot, yeah. I'm, like on oil, like a big ass flame came. Yeah. They're like, yeah. I was like, damn. That's why my, my mother's like me kicking because of that reason. Like the same thing happened to her. So like, she's like, oh, you're not going to know what to do. So like, just like, yeah. stay away from I try and stay away from oil. You feel me? Yeah. Because that should be making a mess. I used to work out um at the movie theaters and like, we would always put the oil in, like the pop, the popcorn popper, mm-hmm. and the I oil. Fucking... There was one that was like broken, so you're supposed to close the kettle. Mm-hmm. But one of them was open. It was broken, so it would stay open. So every time I'm like, you know, how I walk in the rego, and then it would, like, like the popcorn would be popping, like burning my arm. Like, no, nah, fuck that, fuck that shit. I w- I'd wear a long sleeve. And <laughs> said a long sleeve. Um, you were on the radio like a couple times, right? Doing like a bunch of like mix, like mixed battles and stuff. Oh, I was on a. It was a radio station called WBKE. Mm-hmm. It was in Hollywood, hosted by uh, Manny Fresh. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. Yeah, by Manny, by Manny Fresh and Mimi Monroe. Mm-hmm. And I forgot how we linked up, but we just linked up, and we did an interview on the on the on their radio show. Yeah, you feel me? And they just chilled with us a couple of times. You feel me? Came to our performances. They really fucked with us. And I don't know, I just started DJing there every Friday on that little local radio station for me. You were driving up all the way to Hollywood every, every Friday? Mm-hmm. Oh. That shit was lit. But it was fun, you feel me? It was one hour long. It was a good experience, you know? Yeah. I got to meet uh, Super Cindy from 99 Jams. Mm-hmm. Um, got to DJ with uh, DJ Unique from YMCMB. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, bro, I just got to meet a lot of people. Every every new like local people that came, like they came in through, um, did their little interview, and then I DJed for like good. Were you interviewing people too? In a way, yeah, I could ask questions and stuff like that if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. People would call in. Um, I played music for like a fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But besides that, I don't know. I got more busy into heart mm-hmm. and like more performances. You know. Kodak coming out, you know, yeah. like a bunch of people like. You're come. how close were you to Kodak? Oh, not really that close, but GS Nine in a um, not GS Nine, um, Sniper Gang in a way. You feel me? Yeah. Cause they had pulled up to Heart, while Kodak was locked up, mm. and that's the night me Fat, me Fat Boy, and my boy Reggie Mills. Mm. I don't know if you know Reggie Mills. Probably I heard him. He fucks with like Dex and like that that yeah. that crowd. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And John Wicks was like I don't know you know who John Wicks is 
No. He's he's part of Sniper Gang. So it's um John Wicks, Kodak, the only, the only and 1804, is, um, Jack Ward. Cole Leon. Oh, Cole Leon. Yeah, he's the only one right now. And yeah. him and Kodak. Yeah, and then, I don't know, I just had them vibing, you feel me? And mm-hmm. I knew who was who was behind me while I was DJing, for me? So I just knew the right stuff to play. Yeah. So he came back up to me, he was like, yo, Zo, like, you could DJ, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So, like, we just linked up like that. And plus, they're, like, already cool with, like, the people that work at the club, you feel me? Like, Jake, yeah. you know, Brandon, you know, all the promoters and stuff. They're cool with all the promoters, you feel me? Yeah. So... When I when I went to Rolling Loud and I was backstage because Talib was spinning, mm-hmm. you feel me? So Wait, I got, Rolling Loud. Oh, um, this last one. Okay. Uh-huh. So Talib got to spin at the at this last Rolling Loud, and it was me and him like on stage and stuff. We were supposed to open up for Keith, mm-hmm. and Keith's DJ was like Chief Keith's DJ was like mad late, so his manager had sent Talib like all the music to download for the set. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And they ended up coming up on time, you feel me? So we we missed that set, you feel me? But we had, like, three sets that we could have gone to. Yeah. But we only got to do, like, a 30-minute set. I heard, but I heard it was still good. crazy, bro. I heard it's always good just to have, like, you know, like, just, like, you know, like, USB or, like, whatever downloaded just mm-hmm. in case, you know, like, someone says, hey, you know, you're a DJ, go DJ real quick. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes more sense to have, like, a hard drive USB. Yeah. But the distance that they were at, like, we couldn't link up. Yeah. So we had to just do it off the Wi Fi. He sent it through email and we had to use the hard rock. Uh, not the hard rock. Um The Bayfront Wi Fi? No, not the Bayfront on um, Wi Fi. Wait, what's the restaurant that's right there? Um, um Bubble Fish or whatever? Uh uh-uh. Bubble Gump. Uh uh-uh. uh. Like the wing place. No, yeah, the hard rock. Is not hard rock? Is hard rock there? Uh, no. Hooters. It's, no, not the Hooters. Hooters. Yeah, no, it's not the Hooters. Not. Mm-hmm. I think it was a little bit, um, the 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 shrimp the shrimp restaurant right. No, the not the shrimp restaurant. Let me see. TJ Fridays. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, the Hard Rock Cafe. Oh, I didn't uh-huh. know that was on there. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. it's on Biscayne. It's in the back. But I had to use that that Wi-Fi. Well, Tal- uh-huh. Talib had to use that Wi-Fi. But Rolling Loud was a great experience for me. Like I got to see like literally every artist um and it's crazy because the rolling loud before that mm. um i was like i had actually paid the hundred dollars for the ticket yeah and i was like, like, and i was i was in the crowd you feel me yeah like i wasn't like not on stage or i didn't have the connections yet you feel me but i grinded so hard at heart mm. and so did talib so like it was just litty you feel me like yeah. we got the opportunity to, like he got the, the opportunity to be on the flyer um like Great VIP services like our own golf cart stuff like that. It was mm-hmm. just lit, bro. And Zoe was out there. I fuck heavy with Zoe. Zoe Dollars, you know Zoe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I fuck with him. Super heavy. Is like he, when when he was making the song, not. Well, he had already made the song "Blow a Check." No, mm-hmm. run through the money, run yeah. that song. But me and Tyler were the like only ones like pushing that shit so hard at club hard. Like people were just getting so litty. And he came out to heart, like, a couple of times, you feel me? Just because, like, bro, we were just pushing that shit so hard. Yeah. Nah, I feel you. But, yeah, and when 21 came to heart, like, we were out there, too. We opened up. Um, race, um, the Ear Drummers. Race, your, yeah. Yeah, they came, yeah, they came out. Um, who else came out? Dave um, East I came s- out. I saw... Um, Ace yeah. Boogie came out. S- who, who was it that I saw? I was going to ask you about. Um, Jake, Jake made a video on YouTube. Right. Yeah, it's called the Promoter Story Two, mm-hmm. and it shows like everyone that has came out to heart, and all the performances. Let me see. Mm-hmm. What about like, um, like any advice that you want to give to like anyone, like starting out, wanting to become like a promoter, a DJ, a producer. Like well, as far as the promoter advice, um, it's pretty like easy if you're like. If you have the contacts, you don't really need social media. Mm. You feel me? Like you don't need a bunch of followers. You feel me? Like that's not what you need to be a good promoter. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, like what it means to be a promoter. Um, let's say you bring out ten people. Mm-hmm. You gotta make sure you could take care of those ten people. You feel me? Yeah. Like you don't want just ten people to come out and they just stand, or you're like, all right, hey, nice to see you. You come in and then you just never see them again for the rest of the night. Yeah. You feel me? Like why are they gonna come back next weekend? Yeah. So like you kind of want to like 
even if you're not with them in VIP, like, you want to give them, like, you know, a couple of drinks, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Or, like, make sure you could take care of them, you know, chill with them for a little bit. Um, maybe dance with them, stuff like that. Yeah. You just make them, make sure they want to come back, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, if you bring, like, 80 people, you can't chill with all yeah, eight people. Yeah, because it's, like, too many. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, though. You get me? Yeah. Like, the customer service part, at no, least. Of course. And, um, I don't know, it's pretty easy. Like, you just... Also got to have the right connect, but nowadays, like, everyone's trying to be a promoter, everyone's trying to be a DJ, everyone's yeah. trying to be a rapper, everyone's trying to be, like, a trapper, everyone's trying to, everyone's trying to be, like, that type, you feel me? So, yeah. like, the advice I would give them is just you got to make sure that that's really what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause like, don't try and be, like, a fraud or a fake, Yeah, don't you feel like, me? try to be, like, with the crowd. Yeah, because that's not going to work. Yeah. You me? That's not going to work. And, um... What about, like, anyone you want to shout out? Oh, shout out? Yeah. I got a bunch of shout outs. Um, shout out all of Miami. <laughs> shout out all the Haitians, first <laughs> off. Um, shout out to Brandon. Shout out to Talib. Shout out to all the photographers that take pictures of me and all that stuff. Make the videos litty. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Woodrops. I fuck with Woodrops heavy. Uh-huh. Um, JT. Fuck with him, too. Um, I don't know if you know Stanley. You Stanley, did, yeah. You did a video. Yeah, that's my boy. Uh, yeah, we go, we go way back. I feel like a lot of people in Harlem like, know each other. Mhm. It's like the connection over there. Uh. Um, let me see. I don't know. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> Shout out to my grandma. Um, let's see. I don't know. You did a lot of interviews, bro. I see the splash Zanotti. That's my boy, too. That was one of my first ones. Toon, shout out to Toon. Erico. I see Erico. You did Erico's, too. Yeah. Oh, I know C4. I know C4. John Austin's. Javi Dade. Yeah, y- you, didn't do, you didn't do YJ? Nah, he wasn't there. Oh, well, I fuck with them boys. And on Leglock, you fuck with Yeah, like, bro, me and Leglock, we had a crazy access experience one night. Really? Like we, I had through an Airbnb, oh. and this was the first time I ever met Luke. Like I, I invited him to the Airbnb. He brought some porn stars to the Airbnb, uh-huh. and yo, he's just walking around the whole like Airbnb with the clock on his head, like, his mind, like waving it around, all this shit. I'm like, yo, what's up with you, bro? Like, That's why he's Luke. Lock. That's why he's Luke. Lock. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me see who else. Oh, can't shout out to Buttons, of course. Uh-huh. Hey, he did H two. Yeah. That's my boy, too. Let's see. Rari Ant, he's a promoter. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess that's all the shout outs. What about where they can find you at? Oh, uh, you know, just type in NFU. That's, once you type in NFU, it'll pop up. But at NFU, Jaquez, J A C Q U E Z. Um, same, same at name for all social media. Um, or like SoundCloud or SoundCloud, same thing. And a few, you have anything like coming out pretty soon? Is it on the map? I don't know if I should tell y'all, but yeah, we have an EP coming out on the twenty first. Yeah. Um, because like we haven't dropped new music since high school. Oh damn! So it's that's long awaited. So like all the music that we have, it's like sixty something songs. You feel me? Yeah. But it's just. Bang is bang is bang is bang. So now, I don't know. Like it's not that we were waiting or like we were asleep or whatever. Like I don't know. We just didn't feel like it was the right time. Yeah. Kind of want to see what everyone brought to the plate. I mm-hmm. guess in a way. So now I see what everyone brought to the plate. So now it's just time to drop. Just, yeah, that's, uh, that's all the bangers on um, September twenty first. Cause my birthday's on the thirteenth mm-hmm. and Ryan's is on the twenty first. So we're just gonna drop it on the twenty first. So let me show you the, the cover for that shit. It's called Ride the Wave EP. Yeah, you can like put it in the in the camera so they're not sure. My face. Yeah. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let's zoom real quick. Oh, I see. Yeah, go cop that when you drop it on the 21st. Yeah, all right, the wave EP. <laughs> all right, so it's been six feet with DJ. Jaquez, you rocking with the real Haitian.